a very good morning all of you welcome to our day 5 5 am club so we'll go ahead with our meditation and then we'll discuss something about polymeric materials and resins and their applications in dentistry comprehensive overview and tonight in dinner session we'll go in depth and look into various aspects of it right i hope you guys are ready and also we have some notes presentation after meditation so let's go ahead and also please do confirm the audio and video streaming. If at all you have any issues, do let me know in the comment section. Yeah, Swadina, thank you for the update. I mean, thank you for the feedback.
Hi, a oh, very good morning. I hope you still are awake. Okay, guys, Pooja. Hi, Pooja. Very good morning. Hi, Swadina, Harshita, Felicia, Preeti, Niharika, Shivalila. Hi, a oh, very good morning. Hi, Akanksha. Hi, Tejit. A oh, very good morning, guys. So let's go ahead with our uh, discussion. So first and foremost, let's look into various components of, yeah, aspects of polymers. So polymeric materials in, in our profession, we have wide range of applications. So uh, first and foremost, uh, in our first year or second BDS itself, we come across with acrylates. We deal with monomers and polymers and we are very much familiar, if not with the properties of material, at least with the smell of the same. Monomer, uh, I'm sure some of you find it very pungent. For some of you, it could be your favorite smell. For some of you, it could be your worst nightmare. So whatever it is, my point is we are exposed to these monomers or polymers right at the beginning of our profession. And we are very much familiar with handling with them when it comes to uh, you know, prosthodontic aspect. So, we have wide range of applications apart from prosthodontics, apart from uh, maxillofacial processes and other applications in prosthodontics. Uh, these polymeric materials have wider applications in other specialties as well, orthodontics, operative dentistry, endodontics, uh, various equipment which we are using in our profession. So we'll look into those applications now. But before that, as you're all aware of, these polymeric materials, including resins are used for restoring and replacing tooth structure or missing teeth. So we have various restorative materials, which are resin based. In fact, we have various uh, non-resin materials which have been modified and upgraded to resins. Like for example, you take glass enamel, uh, you, we have resin modified GISs available. So also uh, we have some restorations where we're trying to promote bonding using resins, such as amalgam, et cetera. So we have a wide range of applications, restorations as well as replacements of tooth structure, denture bases, partial denture bases, complete denture bases. They are the best examples for replacing these uh, missing teeth. So along with that, another uh, greatest advantage or, or rather I can say with associated with resins is that the possibility of bonding. They can be bonded with other resin materials, take for composite. You can repair composite restorations. You can add a new composite material to an uh, existing uh, composite restorations in case of fracture, just an example. Also a denture repair is possible. So these polymeric materials, the resins can bind with other resins and also they bind with tooth structure, if not chemically, at least micromechanically, that's the basis of uh, bonding and bonding agents and also we have resins which help in promoting adhesion of restorative materials. Take for example, amalgam, right? We'll get back to that again. Amalgam can be bonded to tooth structure via resins. So uh, as we're all familiar with, we have methacrylate resins, uh, mostly used or limited to prosthodontic or operative applications. Along with that, uh, there has been uh, of late introduction of epoxy resins, silurane based resins, silurane based composites, epoxy resins, et cetera, which have this unique ring opening polymerization concept. So during polymerization, we're talking about a ring opening. So uh, in fact, uh, we'll get back to this again in the form of a critical question. So this is the introduction which I wanted to give you in regard to polymeric materials in dentistry. We'll look into more aspects including various types of materials used in uh, maxillofacial prosthodontics, right? Uh, we have so many materials, so many categories. We had a study club discussion last year. We'll try to incorporate more MCQs in tonight's dinner session along these lines, uh, keeping this as a backdrop. Now let's look into various applications. So first of all, this is something which we are very much familiar with. In prosthodontics, we have the following applications, wide range of applications, denture bases and teeth, that's the starting point for any dentist. Soft liners, custom trays, impression, score builder, temporary restorations, 
luting materials, maxillofacial processes, right? Uh, in fact, we had questions from maxillofacial process, uh, processes, the material aspect, the polymer material aspect. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss that further in our dinner session, right? So coming to prosthodontics, these are some wide, wide range of applications. You need not buy hard them, at least go through them and uh, make yourself familiar with these applications, okay? That's the objective. Now, if you look into operated dentistry, dentin bonding agents, composite restorations, resin and GIC restorations, GIC updated restorations like resin modified, resin incorporated GICs, and pit and fissure sealants uh, also in periodontics, also in operated dentistry, uh, splinting materials, uh, resin based fiber materials which are available for splinting, also veneers, right? Uh, these are applications when it comes to operative. Coming to orthodontics, brackets, not just bracket materials, but also bracket placement uh, using resins or resin-based cements and also spacers. And finally, endodontics, uh, gutta percha points, resilon, you might have heard of this name, root canal sealants, resin-based sealants, monoblock concept, rubber dam materials, and finally equipment, mixing bowls and spatulas, yes, resin-based are available, plastic polymers, resins, mouth guards, sports equipment, and protective eyewear, resin-based. So we have wide range of applications when it comes to polymeric materials in our profession. And before we conclude, I have the following question. So that's the reason I haven't elaborated on this, but I'm going to give you some hints, critical thinking questions. The first one is consider this as your homework and do get back to me as soon as possible. The first one is which agent was used for bonding amalgam? I said was intentionally because it's not popular nowadays, but anyways, try find out uh, which agent was used for bonding amalgam to achieve micromechanical because amalgam we only talk about mechanical interlocking, but to take it to the next level, that is micromechanical bonding, which agent was tried. In fact, this particular polymeric agent resin was invented and patented in Japan way back in 1979. And in, in fact, Japan is one of the countries where there is, uh, which is a forefront technology uh, with uh, latest advances in when it comes to resins, when it comes to glass enamors, when it comes to adhesive technology. Also, you might have heard so many names uh, from that country. So, which agent was used for bonding amalgam? The first one and the second one is, we're talking about epoxy resins and salarin based resins, composites, etc. So we also, we mentioned the word ring opening polymerization. What is this ring opening polymerization all about? What's the advantage we're deriving by using these uh, polymeric materials? And to give you a hint, uh, there is one, one of the greatest disadvantages associated with using resins uh, because inherently the material itself during polymerization process, there is a, one of the biggest disadvantages which can be overcome via ring opening a polymerization. So uh, do uh, check, check them out and uh, get back through mail. Also, we'll see if we can incorporate some questions along these lines. Definitely, we'll have one question from a ring opening polymerization concept. And of course, even from amalgam. But don't wait, uh, try to answer, right? So this is what I wanted to highlight. You can consider this as initiating a session and we'll have more uh, in-depth analysis and also material aspect discussion in our dinner session tonight, right? So I hope it's clear and you have any queries or I need any assistance, always feel free to get back through mail 24 by seven. So I, I, I hope you had a wonderful uh, pleasant sleep last night. I definitely had a pleasant sleep. I had uh, five, five hours, around five hours of wonderful deep sleep. And I'm really pumped up and looking forward today uh, for uh, completing various essential activities including your study club discussions, right? So have a wonderful day ahead and uh, let's keep this consistency and enthusiasm going. And I really appreciate you all for uh, active participation early in the morning. I started streaming this session from 4.49 or 4.45 and I've seen some of you live at that time, uh, which is just amazing. Early morning, if you're waking, uh, if you're utilizing these wonderful hours, 
without any doubt you have an edge over others mark my words so have a fantastic day ahead see you tonight in our dinner session at 7:30 pm ist bye take care